So we have a huge Johnny Depp W there. Huge Johnny Depp W. Now we have an Amber Heard L. Now, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. This one is way more speculative. Now, I know some other people have done some stuff on this one. This is way more speculative, though. This is based on way more allegations. But we're going to talk about it because it's very relevant and important. This is much more rumor. This is much more tea. And I just finished drinking my green tea latte, so I don't have any more tea, right? I've got some soju and some um, and some coffee behind me. Uh, tonight's drink of choice, by the way, during the actual trial will be makoli. I'll be drinking makoli. Uh, that'll be really fucking great. I need to get some hangover drinks, though, because I'm going to get hungover as fuck. So, um, so anyways, uh, this one is an L for Amber Heard's team. Um, and Dung is fun says woke people are too busy paying off their student loan debt. That is facts, guys. That is facts. All right. So the scandal for Amber Heard and the huge loss she's going to take is with David Shane. With David Shane. So who is David Shane? Let's start with that. Let's start with who is David Shane. All right. David Shane is Amber Heard's public relations director. And now he's coming up with accusations of sexual assault. So I'm going to read through the, this, and then I'm going to tell you what I think about this. So David Shane was hired during the trial after the other um, PR manager was fired. So David Shane is now accused of sexually abusing women he met through dating apps, specifically Raya, which is an exclusive invite-only dating app. I actually had to look this up because, guys, uh, full confession here. I have probably used every single dating app known to man. Uh, if there's a dating app, I've tried to I've tried to use it, and you know I can probably rate them in a, in a separate chat. That's a whole separate thing. Uh, I've been part of a lot of the invite only ones um, initially. I mean, some of them like the league, for example. I was like one of the first people on the league. Um, the people on the league, which is funny, they always like, oh, go to good schools, attractive, successful, but the looks on the league were not that great uh, on both sides uh, for the men and the women. But that being said. Um, David Shane, uh, he's accused of sexually abusing women. He met through dating apps. So on Twitter, screenshots of Facebook messages are circulating that show the women have made their allegations. So women are making allegations that he's a creep. Okay. Okay. So, uh, a woman claimed he tried to force her after meeting in real life, tried to force her into, uh, the sex, right? So the woman who went by the name H, right? And it's kind of ironic. He's representing Amber Heard and the name is H here. So we'll assume it's not Amber, but, um, said that she remembered meeting Shane for dinner at Mr. Chow, a restaurant in Los Angeles. I haven't been there. Uh, she claimed that he had been drinking a lot while they're on a date, right? And started to get pretty boring during the two-hour date. Man, so he, she's just like negging him right there. So he's drunk and boring. Wow, okay. After the date, she alleges that she needs to return to Shane's condo in West Hollywood where uh, he suddenly... Why, why would she need to return to his condo? That's interesting. I need to get some more details there. But he allegedly became aggressive towards her while initiating sex. She claims that she, Shane insinuated that she owed him because of dinners he paid for while they were gone. After the incident, the woman posted an alert in her Facebook group about online dating experiences. She also claims to have alerted the app through which she met uh, Shane. So she alerted Raya, warning them of a user who potentially put women at risk. By the way, uh, if you guys don't know, if a woman puts an allegation like this to you on a dating app, the dating app pretty much automatically kicks the guy off like uh, instantly. They don't verify. They don't check. They don't give you a, a retort. Like Twitter, for example, they'll just, I'm oh, sorry, not Twitter, um, Tinder. Um, they'll just kick you off the app. Like men don't have a right of protest. Like if anybody just alleges something, they're kicked off the app, which makes it super easy to cancel men off of dating apps, which happens all the time, right? And then men have to get separate numbers and have to do around new emails, new phones, use a VPN. It's really a pain in the ass. But, you know, there's a will, there's a way, baby. Um, so David Shane engaged a crisis management firm to deal with this press and now there's new information that's come out that he's trying to bury this. So the um, the allegations, let me show you the guy here too. So this is David Shane, right? Right here on the right, the kind of nerdy guy with the glasses. Um, there are, and here are some of the allegations. So let me try to pop this bad boy open here for you guys. Um, so allegedly, um, there's a screenshot from the Facebook group. And we're going to go to House and Habits Instagram because this is where a lot of this shit's been going down. So screenshot of the post she shared to the Facebook group. I met this man on the dating app, Rhea. He took me on two dates and tried to take complete advantage of me in his condo in West Hollywood. He basically insinuated that I owed him for the dates he bought me on. When I said no to most of the things he asked me to do, he kicked me out. 
His name is David Shane. He seems to be someone who does this to a lot of women on the app, right? And well, I took you to Nobu. I have been to Nobu. Um, and look, I'm going to say one thing real quick. Uh, if I took somebody to Nobu, uh, first of all, don't take a woman to a date that you're going to regret, right? So if you're going to feel like you're paying too much for a date and you're going to feel salty about it, just don't go on that date. This is an, uh, a pro tip to guys, right? Go get one drink, right? That's the why drinks are some of the best dates or coffee, right? Starbucks, right? You can afford $5. You're not going to be salty about it too. It's fucking coffee, right? Go pay $5, go on a coffee date. If you like the girl, then you can go on a more intensive date. But use that to screen out people, right? That's the number one pro tip. Girls and guys, by the way, this works both ways. For girls, if you go on a low investment date like that, not a dinner, right? The guy's not going to feel this way. Um, just th This is just throwing this out here. Um, but typical beta males do this type of behavior. Just very, very insecure beta males who think they can just beta bucks their way in. They can just pay for the pussy. Um, and that's not how it works. And they find out the hard way, unfortunately. So she took me on a second date and he was notably, um, uh, showed me on the second date, he was notably rushing to their dinner, drinking just as heavily, but appeared more agitated, seemed to be in a hurry. After, after dinner, when she agreed to go back to his honda in West Hollywood, he became instantly aggressive towards her in initiating sex and seeing that she owed it to him because of the two luxurious dinners he paid for. She said at one point while they were sitting on the couch, he even grabbed her head and pushed it forcefully down into his lap. When she resisted, he got mad and told her he would just call her a fucking Uber. All right. Well, there you go. There you go. And this is the, apparently the text messages. Hi, want to play tonight? Who the fuck are you? David, let's play and I'll Venmo you. Quit texting me. Also, I don't know anyone who can give you blow at 9 p.m. Delete my fucking number, you old ass fuck bitch. I thought you deleted um, uh, off Rhea. I thought I got you deleted off Rhea a long time ago. Sexual assault is a real thing. I should have blocked you forever ago. What? That's crazy. Don't play dumb, you fucking idiot. I have no idea why you're texting me. All right. All right. Interested. Interesting. So if these are legitimate, it's uh, very, very interesting. So here's the thing, guys. Before I go any further, before I show any of the stories, um, let me just call this out right now. Let me call this out right now. Be very, very fucking clear here. If this was a regular dude, if this was like you guys for the guys out there, right? If it was the guys out there or women out there, if this was your brother, your friend, your coworker, right? Who's a guy? Think about this. And they were accused of this. I would say the same thing as I would say to most people, which is we need, where's the police report? You know, has there been a police report filed? Um, and, uh, you know, what other evidence do we have here? Because and I got to plug this uh, computer in. Uh, I always end up kicking the cord while I'm, while I'm doing this show. It always happens every single time. But if it was somebody, there you go. Perfect. All right. So, son of a bitch. So uh, this thing always, always, always gives me trouble. Um, so if this was any other guy, this was your brother, your friend, your cousin, anybody you know, think of a guy who you know and you don't hate who's going on dates with women. And they were just accused of doing this. In fact, this is something that uh, Aziz Ansari was accused of, very controversial, kind of the edge of the Me Too movement, which is, okay, I went on a date with a guy. The guy feels like, um, the guy feels like I owe him sex, right? And he makes the move and you say no. Well, to me, first of all, I'd say, okay, even if that's true, Probably not. Now we'd have to go into the exact details. Probably not sexual assault. Probably bad behavior, inappropriate behavior, but probably not sexual assault. If he's just saying, oh, you owe me sex and you walk out and you leave and he calls you an Uber. That's probably not sexual assault. And I would say, do they deserve to be canceled for that? In most cases, no, you don't deserve to be canceled for that. Can you be called out for that? Sure. Absolutely. Go on a private Facebook group, call them out, say they're a piece of shit. That's fine. Whatever. That's okay. And I would typically take the guy's side in terms of, hey, they could be lying on this, right? You need it. It's not whether it's a guy or a girl. You need to wait for the proof. And also, if she's alleging sexual assault, there needs to be a police report. There needs to be a police report. Without a police report, how are we supposed to believe this? But here's the problem. This isn't any old guy. This isn't a rando. This is Amber Heard's PR guy. She is a, she is literally, literally making the same sort of allegations. So this guy, the duality here, 
He is on one hand representing Amber Heard, saying that she has legitimate claims of sexual assault. And on the other hand, fighting off and saying these are illegitimate. Well, you can't have it both ways. Either both of them are sus because there's no police report or both or hashtag believe all women. You got to be both of them. You can't have it both ways. And once again, it, this always happens. And I love someone saying the, it happens to the feminist allies. It always happens to the feminist allies. They're the ones who get exposed as the beta male creeps. They're the orbiters. The people that are sitting there going, you go, girl. Yeah, you get them. Yeah, yeah, I'll wear that pink pussy hat with you. Secretly, they're wishing they could hit. Secretly, they're the guys. See, I, and, and the reason why I believe this is more credible is the type of person who would back Amber Heard is a type of sexually frustrated twerp who would do something exactly like this. I think it's more credible of a claim because it's David Shane. Because it's team heard. Only a moralist, spineless twat would represent somebody who's clearly lying like Amber Heard and then would turn around and do something like this. Because we know that people who follow those lies are all liars themselves. This is why I think this is a massive L for Heard's team. For, I mean, you hire your PR guy and then the PR guy gets bad PR. It's not looking good. Dear Dana is told right. He was a nerd in high school and couldn't hit it. That's exactly right. It's the nerds who never grew up who thought, hey, the secret is to pay for the pussy. I'm just going to pay for the pussy and that's going to be it. And they never learned how to talk to women, right? They never learned how to just go on a normal date, how to just have a regular conversation, how to organically get a woman interested in them instead of transactionally get a woman interested in them. Totally different skill. Um, so, uh, let's go to some of the stories. So this is just some of the IG stories. So guys, if you want to follow this, uh, this is house and habit. So I'm going to show you some of the IG stories. Now, mind you, these are just IG stories, right? The, the credibility could not even, could be non-existent here, but I, I just want to show you these as an illustration. So house and habit is posting, uh, this information about David Shane. Would you delete your entire online footprint based on one IG story detailing an incident you claim to be a lie? No, I probably wouldn't. That's a good point, right? Um, or is the reaction of someone who is rightfully scared really because they know this one lie comes attached with many other worse lies floating around LA? Well, there you go. Um, so uh, they might play a dirty game, but we've got our own de devoted online investigators and legal heads leading our path forward. That's the crazy thing, guys. The thing about this Amber Heard trial, which has been great, is, is that people, um, and this is just her talking about David Chain here, um, and whether or not he's going to be in court today. So guys, today I'm going to be on the lookout and you guys too, let me know in the chat. Let me know on my pre-show, you know, in my post-show. Um, well, not in the pre-show because we won't know, but the post-show. Let me know if you've seen David Shane. I want to get those David Shane alerts. You've seen what he looks like, the little twerp with the glasses. If he's in court today, I think it's going to be a bad look, a real bad look. So I don't think he's going to be in court today. Um, so, and I'm just going to go past to find some of these other ones um, here. So essentially, there was a person who came by and served this source H. So the source H is the woman, the woman who made the allegations, who reported him to Rhea. So apparently an unknown man came and banged to the door and uh, the husband answered the door and served him an envelope and informed that he knew which he knew the cars and who they belonged to, blah, blah, blah. And it was a... Uh, notice. And apparently the notice was a cease and desist based on the false allegations of uh, sexual assault against Mr. Shane. So they essentially said that, hey, these are defamatory statements. And they threatened to sue H, the woman, with defamation. Amber Heard's team, David Shane, is threatening defamation. It's hilarious. So we reviewed your anonymous allegations on the Instagram account of fervent Johnny Depp fan and mommy blogger Jessica Reed Krauss, House and Habit. As you know, Krauss has fanatically defended Johnny Depp against allegations of assault, which he contacted her after re recognizing Mr. Shane on television, observing his client and Ms. Heard's trial. The original post by you from December 2018, which was republished by Mrs. Krauss, um, was alleged was posted to a Facebook group dedicated to warning women about bad dates. Your post basically accuses Mr. Shane of being a crappy and ungentlemanly date. 
At worst, he is accused of being boorish, but there is no mention whatsoever of sexual assault. I met this man on the dating app Rhea. He took me out for two dates and tried to take complete advantage of me in his condo in West Hollywood. He basically insinuated I owed him for the dates he brought me on. Uh, when I said no to most of the things he asked me to do, he kicked me out. His name is David Shane. He seems to be someone who does this to a lot of women on the app. Once again, if this was anybody but David Shane, I would be like, this is, you know, this is too far. This, this is, you know, we're taking this too far. But it's David Shane. He's defending, he's literally defending Amber Heard. Once again, Mr. Shane's reputation will be irrevoc irrevocably damaged by your false allegations of sexually assault, sexual assault and soliciting drugs and sex. He sees no alternative but to sue you for defamation. Mr. Shane is confident he will prevail given your change in your story once you recognize him during debt versus herd. This is, this is so hilarious. So he's worried about allegations of sexual assault, drugs, and sex. Wow, isn't that something that Johnny Depp is now accused of? Isn't that a little too close to comfort? It is also difficult to imagine that a woman who took the time to complain to contact Rhea, the dating app, to complain about Mr. Shane, did not take the time to file a police report if she was sexually assaulted. Literally, this is a statement in the, in the, the cease and desist. Think about this. This describes Amber Heard. Amber Heard took the time to talk to periodicals, took the time to talk to The Sun, The Washington Post, but she never took the time to file a fucking police report? I'm calling bullshit. We cannot believe that outright. We can say, oh, it's an allegation. It's a he said, she said. You have not filed a police report. Show me the evidence. Show me the proof. Where's the due process that everyone is due, man and woman? Everybody's due due process here.